Welcome to Parasitic Diseases. Today we're going to discuss tapeworms of minor medical importance. Included in the, that group is Hymenelopus nana, Hymenelopus diminuta, and Dipolidium caninum. Let's start with Hymenelopus nana. It's also known as the dwarf tapeworm, hence the word nana, which means small. The life cycle just like all the other tapeworms, involves an intermediate host. And in this case, the intermediate host turns out to be an insect. <clears throat> so we see the life cycle displayed here, and the infection begins by us either ingesting embryonated eggs, or we can ingest a beetle or a flea, which contains the later stage of this parasite. A stage which doesn't necessarily have to involve an insect. It can involve the mammalian host directly. So this parasite has two alternations to its life cycle, therefore improving its chances for survival. But let's just begin with the egg. The egg is swallowed. The hexacanth larva then hatches out of the egg. And then it penetrates the villus. And there it undergoes development to the next stage which is the immature tapeworm. The immature tapeworm then attaches to the wall of the small intestine, and the scolex, which contains suckers and hooklets, develops the proglottids, and that might take three or four months to develop, just like most of the other adult tapeworms. And at that point, the infection is complete. As gravid segments pass out of the host, and the eggs are expressed either in, at the anal sphincter or perhaps disintegrate into the stool, uh, it contaminates the environment. And in addition to humans, uh, rodents can also serve as the definitive host. They can harbor adult tapeworms. So they are actually um, a source of the infection for, for people. The global distribution of this parasite uh, indicates its rate of success. It's an extremely common tapeworm to, to be found in peridomestic regions throughout the world. Fortunately, this is a tapeworm which causes almost no pathological consequences whatsoever, um, certainly not for adults. Children uh, have been documented with heavy infections that are also experiencing uh, degrees of diarrhea. When the tapeworm infections were treated, the diarrhea abated. Therefore, the connection was made between uh, at least heavy infections in pediatric patients uh, and the presence of large numbers of worms. Diagnosis is very straightforward. Just find the eggs in the stool. They're very characteristic. They've got hooklets and this uh, larva stage inside that's easily identified. Uh, Aurora, if the segments are brought in, they are characteristic for Hymenolopus nana and can be distinguished from other tapeworms based on their morphology. The treatment is straightforward, just like before. Praziquantel is the drug of choice. Now, prevention and control is rather more difficult because limiting the exposure to the droppings of mice and rats, especially in areas where uh, poverty exists, is a rather difficult thing to do. So this is a disease of children living in poverty, basically, and um, they're their only hope is to eliminate these reservoir hosts from the environment, and it's done so by social pressure and social change. And unfortunately, because that's not a very common thing to find no matter where we go, these infections will uh, survive uh, no matter what. Another species of Hymenolopus, in this case Hymenolopus diminuta, also involves a complex life cycle, and in this case, it requires a beetle. It isn't an alternate life cycle in this point. It requires an insect intermediate host, and it begins by a human or a reservoir host, accident humans accidentally ingesting these beetles, or rodents actually purposefully ingesting the beetles because that's part of their food supply. The stage inside the beetle, the larval stage, then hatches, released into the small intestine, the scolex evaginates, attaches to the small intestinal wall, the proglottids are produced, the proglottids that become gravid after about three months, they begin to break off, releasing their eggs into the environment, and the eggs then are eaten in the wild or in peridomestic situations where rodent droppings are common. 
The beetles then eat the eggs and acquire the, the um, cystocercoid stage of this parasite, which lodges in the tissue of the beetle. Uh, the beetle is then eaten, releasing the cystocercoid, which develops into the adult tapeworm. Again, like Hymenolepis nana, the distribution for Diminuta is also global, peridomestic, primarily an infection of children, the vast majority of children infected with either Hymenolepis diminuta or Hymenolepis nana are, are asymptomatic, and these are incidental findings. And as the result, <clears throat> uh, treatment is rather straightforward, but really doesn't result in any clinical improvement um, in most cases because there was, there was nothing to treat to begin with, except the presence of this parasite, of course. A diagnosis is made by finding the eggs in the stool. Prevention and control, easy to say, difficult to do. Prevent the invasion of our domestic <laughs> lives with rodents that want to take advantage of the fact that a food supply is one of the things that characterizes human settlement. So uh, we will have these parasites with us probably for as long as we remain on this planet. The last of these uh, minor tapeworms of tapeworms of minor medical importance, I should say, is Dipolidium caninum. <clears throat> now, Dipolidium caninum is primarily a parasite of dogs, but humans can also encounter them and act as a, a host for this parasite, as the adult of this parasite, I should say. The intermediate host in this case turns out to be a flea, so that it's very easy to see how dogs can acquire this infection because dogs groom themselves routinely and as a result, whenever they find an offending arthropod, be it a flea or a, a louse, they bite them and kill them, and sometimes they swallow them. Uh, and in the act of swallowing these fleas, if you can imagine a dog grooming itself in the presence of a small child, they're playing together, romping around in the room, let's say. The dog stops, is bitten by a flea, decides exactly where it is, nails that flea, bites it between its teeth, and it's just about to swallow this flea when the child comes over and gives the dog a big hug. And the dog, of course, is diverted in the swallowing, and a natural instinct of this dog is to lick its, its owner, in this case. And in doing so, sometimes can transfer this damaged flea from its oral cavity to the child's oral cavity. And when that happens, the child can then become infected with the adult parasite. The parasite is the um, intermediate stage of this parasite. The larva is in the muscle tissue of the flea and is released by the act of digestion in the small intestine, the stage that will result in the uh, e extravagation of the um, scolex uh, comes out of the tissue of the flea and is stimulated to produce its scolex evaginating it and attaching to the small intestinal wall. Three months later, gravid proglottids are being shed into the environment. They are shed as clusters of eggs in this case. And these clusters of eggs uh, are deposited in the environment. And it's obvious that um, in most domestic situations, children are potty trained by the time they're two or three years old. Dogs are taken outside. And if dog feces is not controlled, then the eggs of their adult um, tapeworms can remain in the environment for some time. And indeed, the larvae of fleas feed on feces and can acquire the infection by ingesting these clusters of eggs. Then as it matures to an adult flea, the adult flea harbors the same stage, and that begins the cycle again. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, apparently quite successful in many environmental situations. Again, Dipolidium caninum can be found throughout the world. There are vague sets of symptoms associated with this parasite in humans, and it's most likely not due to the parasite itself. So those symptoms have to be uh, attributed to something else that's going on. The diagnosis is made by finding these characteristic packages of eggs. And, of course, the same treatment is applied to all the adult tapeworms, praziquantel, so you can cure the infection this way quite easily. Prevention and control. Now, now we do have an, a, an option here. We can treat dogs for their fleas by wearing flea collars 
And this will limit the exposure of dogs to fleas. And of course, it will limit even further the exposure of fleas to humans. And as a result, in most um, developed countries, this infection is a, a rare finding. So the next time we meet, we will switch gears once again. We've moved from the nematodes to the cestodes. We will now move from the cestodes to the trematodes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.